Let's get this straight. The way you put your hands on the golf club will have more influence on the face of the club than any other body part you possess. It is vital that the hands get on the golf club in a way that allows you to get the club face square to the path you're swinging on. And gosh, there are variations, I'm going to go into that, there are variations, but a phrase that I like to use is strong is long. Grips can be weak, grips can be strong. I'm going to talk about how to get a strong grip. I'm going to talk about whether you should interlock, whether you should overlap, whether you should two-hand the grip. But I will tell you this, nothing, absolutely nothing will influence your game more than how you put your hands on the club. It is beyond vital to get this correct. How the hands go on the golf club, often referred to as the grip, or perhaps how you hold the golf club. Nothing is more important than how the hands go on the golf club. Now, if you look at my golf clubs, you can see I've, yes, I've been at work, I've been to the tattoo parlor, you might say. Um, as someone who's just getting into the game of golf, I would really recommend, or even if you're a long time player and you're just trying to do a reset, this is not a request from Martin Hall, this is a plea to get this as good as you can, get your hands on the club as well as you possibly can. Now I'm going to talk about lead hand and trail hand, I'm not going to talk about left hand and right hand, lead hand and trail hand, so it makes sense for both left handers and right handers, that's why we're doing that. So let's talk about the lead hand. You can see I've marked that glove up in a number of ways and I'm going to talk about what I've done, why I've done it and why the grip is so important. So let me say this, nothing will have more influence on the face of the club during the swing than how your hands go on the golf club. Uh, your hands are the only body part that touch the golf club and so the way you position your hands is super vital. And so there's a particular way and by the way if you have a bad grip you probably will never end up with a good golf swing. I'll say that one more time. If you have a bad grip, you're probably never going to end up with a good golf swing. So let's talk about the lead hand. How does the lead hand go on the club? And the way I want the lead hand to go on the club is, first of all, there is talk that the club sits in the fingers. I don't agree with that. There is talk that the club sits in the palm. I don't agree with that either. I think that's wrong. So I think the club sits partially in the fingers and partially in the palm. That's why I've drawn that line across my lead palm like that. Why do I want to do that? Because that is where the club needs to go. It goes partially in the fingers, partially across the palm with the lead hand. You'll see also that I've put a piece of tape there. That piece of tape is on the heel pad of my lead hand. So the club sits in the fingers and the palm of my lead hand and the heel pad sits what I would call on top of the golf club. It doesn't sit to the side of the golf club, it doesn't sit underneath the golf club. The heel pad sits on top of the golf club. Um, one of history's greatest golfers actually called that the sixth finger and the sixth finger has to be adhered to the club. So the first part of the lead hand, so important, it sits partially in the fingers, partially in the palm, heel pad on top. When I close my fingers around the club, now I get a V between the thumb and forefinger. I haven't got my thumb sticking way down the shaft like that. I've got a V between my thumb and forefinger. And that V is going to point for me about at my trail shoulder, somewhere towards my trail shoulder, chin to trail shoulder but my preference as a newcomer towards the trail shoulder don't do this don't do this that's the v pointing to your lead shoulder that's a no-no you want that v pointing to your trail shoulder that's called a strong grip and strong is long strong is going to help you hit the ball uh, a long way when in time you get to it two more pieces for the lead hand grip that piece of tape there that's actually sitting on top of what is called the anatomical snuff box. And you need the anatomical snuff box to be on top of the golf club. And the last piece of information for the lead hand, as I glance down and look at this, I can see one, two, three knuckles of my lead hand. Now you might be thinking, oh my goodness, that's a lot of detail. It is a lot of detail, but please get this bit right. This hand 
actually a lot more important than the trail hand. Lead hand way more important than the trail hand. So let me go through that a little bit quicker now that you've got an idea. The club sits partly in the fingers, partially in the palm. The heel pad sits on top. The V that we make with the thumb and forefinger of the lead hand, well that points to the trail shoulder. The snuff box is on top of the club and as you glance down you can see one, two, three knuckles of the lead hand. That pretty much takes care of the position of the lead hand. The trail hand, not as important but still matters. You can see I've put some lines on the fingers, through the fingers of my trail hand. I always think of putting the trail hand on from underneath the golf club and having the fingers hit the bottom of the grip. The line there, the lifeline of my right hand, that is going to sit on top of the thumb of my lead hand. And there's another V there, you can see it, yes, and that's also pointing to my trail shoulder. Now, would it be a good idea if you marked a couple of gloves up like this? Yes, it would be a really good idea. You will be on the way to playing good golf if you just get your hands on this way. Now, that's certainly not all there is to say about grip, but the two V's pointing to the trail shoulder. There's a couple of other things that really matter. Should you use an overlap grip, where I, you can see here I've overlapped the pinky of my trail hand, should you use an overlap grip, should you use an interlock grip, or should you use a two-handed grip? Some people call this the baseball grip. I actually don't think of it as baseball because I think baseball, they hold the bat in the palm, so I just call it a two-handed grip. Okay, let me give you some thoughts on that. The two-handed grip, for many ladies and senior golfers, the two-handed grip, where the hands are close together, no doubt about it, all the same rules apply, but the two-handed grip often adds a bit of club head speed for the senior golfer or the lady golfer who might want a bit more distance. Perhaps, uh, you know, you know you're not, that's not as strong as you used to be. The two-handed grip, good for senior golfers and lady golfers. The interlock grip, very good for big, strong golfers. Two of golf's greatest golfers ever, Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods, both use the interlock. But I would say this, if you interlock, for goodness sake, make sure you interlock the pinky of the trail hand locking against the index finger of the lead hand. It's a lock. It's not loose. It's not the interloose grip. Don't want any gaps there. It's the interlock grip. That's good if you're very strong and you have plenty of speed and you're looking for more control. Or the middle of the road, which is the one I use, is called the overlap grip, where I overlap the pinky over the index finger of my lead hand. So there is a position for your hands on the golf club. Mark your gloves up to get that. There is a choice of two hand interlock overlap. And there's one last thing you need to know about the grip. There's the pressure. How tight should you hold a golf club? How tight should you hold it? Well, if 10 is as tight as you could hold it, trying to crush the shaft, that's too tight. If one is letting the club fall through the hands, that's too light. On a scale of one to 10, I'm going to recommend probably about a four or a five. Not all that tight, but certainly not too loose. So let's put all that together. Lead hand, partially in the palm, partially in the fingers, heel pad on top, V to the trail shoulder. Trail hand in the fingers, lifeline on top of lead thumb, V to the shoulder. Make your choice on two hand interlock overlap pressure. That's about a four or a five. When you've done that, you have a chance then to get the club on the ball. Now here's what I would suggest. Get comfortable getting your hands on the golf club. And it will be uncomfortable to start with but in time it will become comfortable. This is the sort of thing you could do at home when you're watching TV. Um, you could do it if you're sitting outside in the garden or something like that. Get the hands on the club properly. There is nothing more important on this journey to you being a golfer than getting your hands on properly. It will serve you well and that is a promise.